Forum 5 Stories is brought to you by Mobile Action. Make your app business a success with world-class data. Sign up on mobileaction.co and apply the promo code 415. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Forum 5 Stories. I'm your host Taha. Today is a great day in San Francisco. Sign is shining through the downtown and I'm here with my incredible guest today. She's a developer, a founder, an angel investor and a fellow podcast host. I didn't know that. And as we see on the news a few weeks ago, she bought a house and it is not a normal house. She bought the pink paint lady of the San Francisco's front of the landmark. And ladies and gentlemen, Leah Culver is my guest on the pod today. Hey, Leah, welcome to the pod. Oh, thanks so much. Happy to be here. Sure. I'm so excited to have you here. So can you tell us about yourself? I'd like to hear your story. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll give a little bit of my story. So um, let's see. I grew up in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Um, I majored in computer science in college, and I moved out here to San Francisco about 14 or 15 years ago um, just to do software development. Um, in the process, I have founded several companies, um, worked at a variety of companies as a developer. Um, I've done a little bit of angel investing, as you mentioned. Um, and then just this year, um, you mentioned buying a house. So that was kind of the big excitement was um, purchasing pretty much my first home that I'll, I'll sort of own and live in myself. Um, one of the painted ladies um, of Postcard Row in San Francisco kind of considered, you know, tourist attraction mm-hmm. um, here in town. Cool. So um, let's dive into the lady and I'd like to see if, how did you came up with the idea? Like how did all the things? Well, I had been looking to buy a house, like a finished house, like just Mm -hmm. someplace to live in um, for about a year and a half and nothing had felt really quite right. Um, Hadn't found anything that I fell in love with. And my real estate agent, agent said, well, where would you ideally love to live? And I said, Oh, I'd love to live, you know, someplace really famous and beautiful and a beautiful old Victorian home, something like a painted lady. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, oh, they're, they're actually some of them are total dumps, like not very nice inside. And I think he was talking about this one. Um, but then I came up for sale and um, I talked to him right away and he's like, I got chills. I knew you were interested in this. Um, and so I put in an offer and it, it was a pretty normal process, um, similar mm-hmm. to how you buy any, any sort of home. Um, yeah, and I got it. I was lucky enough to be you know, sort of the the winning offer on the house. Cool. So how's renovation going? So that's a great question. It's actually, you know, unlike, you know, these TV shows on HGTV <laughs> and whatever, like you don't just start knocking down walls. Um, I'm actually still in the planning phases. So really boring stuff. So yes, just yesterday I set up a bank account for the remodel. Um, so that I can track the funds used and how much. Um, so I think a mistake you can make in remodeling a home is not tracking the expenses wa- well. And so I set up almost a separate account just to make it really easy to track the money that's going in, into the house to know what the final cost will be. I'm um, setting up a budget. I actually hired um, a developer, someone who develops homes professionally, and to be sort of a project manager to help with um, both cost management um, and also coordination. So there's a lot of times that you'll need to coordinate um, the builder with the architect, with the mm-hmm. you know site surveyor. So um, so hired someone to do that. Um, I'm in the process of hiring an architect. Um, all of this stuff that I didn't know very much about, it's become sort of like a whole production. Um, it's a, it's quite a bit of work. Um, I I would not necessarily recommend it. I would have preferred to sort of buy a finished home. But I think it's worth it. For the pink painted lady, right? It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, I'm. I'm really excited. I set up an Instagram account where people can follow me. Yeah, it's, it's at, like, at like pink ten k followers lady. right now. Yeah, um, it's, I think it's around fourteen thousand followers. Wow. Um, I'm hoping. I'm hoping to get some more before we actually start building. But mm-hmm. I feel bad because I, I, you know, I'm posting historic photos. I'm posting photos of the before, like the things that it looks like now. Um, but it's going to be a whole, it's going to be a whole process. I expect mm-hmm. it to take anywhere from one to three years to do the whole remodel. So. Well, it's exciting, but it's slower than expected. Yeah, great. So let's talk about Breaker. Sure. And how the story started and how things came up. So Breaker is now about three years old. So, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, in startup years, that's a long time. Um, started it basically because I had started listening to podcasts um, while training for my first marathon. I'm actually now going to run my fourth marathon this summer. So. I was training for my marathon and I was listening to Serial, like a very popular podcast um, from a few years ago. And when the podcast ended, 
I didn't really know what other podcasts to listen to. And I, I, you know, heard of a few, um, but really I wasn't really having good luck with sort of Apple's recommendations. And I kept asking friends what to listen to. And then I was like, oh, there really should be like a better way to discover new podcasts. And that's how the idea for Breaker came about. Basically just providing um, better recommendations based on, you know, what your friends listen to, what they like, what you've listened to in the past. Um, Breaker also lets you like episodes, leave comments. It's really more like a Instagram or YouTube or something for a podcast. So that's where the idea kind of came about. Since then, we've, we've... you know, we launched an Android app, um, and now we're working on stuff for podcasters as well. So it's really, mm-hmm. really grown. Great. So, is there any features coming to the Breaker? Uh, there is lots of new features. I don't normally talk about them much ahead of time. I'm right now working, reworking how we look at friends activity. Um, so how we expose that in the mm-hmm. app and and redoing that so it's more helpful. Like we had this original like activity feed timeline thing, and now it's like how can we bring you know, people love it when they say, they see, oh, if three of your friends like this episode, how do we bring that to the forefront in Breaker? So I'm working on that right now. Okay, so for now, it's been three years. And what's your plans for the upcoming three years? The next three years are super exciting. We basically want to do everything for podcasts. So it's like right now, podcasting is really fragmented into hosting and apps and Um, advertising and there's all these different areas and I think what's really exciting is we want to do everything so the whole gamut of stuff nothing's Mm -hmm. off the table like we just want to be the place for podcasting great so I think you've been in Y Combinator for twice and one with Comor and the second with Breaker so it looks like you like the accelerator so much and what made you go through the YC like one time is okay but Twice? Like, what, yeah, what's so the magic I am, there? I am a big fan of Y Combinator. And actually, it's a surprising, it, when I tell people why I did it a second time, it's not normally what you'd think. So I did it the first time. Um, we had a really good experience. Learned a lot. Learned a lot about fundraising. Learned about running a company. Learned about building product. Just a wonderful experience. The second time, I wanted to do it um, really for two reasons. One, my co-founder had never done Y Combinator, and he wanted that sort of same mm-hmm. learning experience. Um, And then the second was really I wanted to sort of give back to Y Combinator. So part of the deal is that they take a small percent equity in the company, um, equivalent to sort of like an early employee. And so because they had been so helpful the first time around, I thought, well, Mm -hmm. you know, Breaker, you know, Breaker is going to be this big success and I want them to share in in that success as well. So it was really, um, to me, I feel some loyalty Mm -hmm. um, sort of to people who've helped me on the past. I feel the same way towards sort of people who believe in Breaker and who believe in my past companies, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. I see them as part of like my team and, and sort of want to have them on board um, again. Great. So um, as a world of startups right now, there are, I think even today will be like somewhere around 50 or 100 startups just founded here in San Francisco. So as I like, I think I can say a veteran sort of founder, what will be your advice to the first time or second time founders as they start their companies? Oh, wow. That, that is a great question. I think there's so much startup advice out there and really good resources. Yes. I think all the stuff from Y Combinator is great. I think all of these thought leaders sort of in the VC world and tech Twitter, everything, everyone has a lot of advice. Um, the one thing I would like to, the one thing I've learned over many years is I think it's very, very stressful to start a company, personally stressful, um, and to learn to have ways to manage that stress. So I do that through exercise, working out, mm-hmm. getting enough sleep, really taking care of my own health. Um, I know different people have different approaches. Some do meditation. Mm-hmm. Um, all of that stuff I found to be extremely beneficial. So I guess just don't, you know, doing a, accept that it's stressful um, and then figure out ways to calmly deal with that stress and stick around. One of the things I'm most proud of is that Breaker's been around for three <laughs> years, right? Like that's yeah. a long time. It's a long time to have the stress of being a founder. So that's, I'm very proud of that. Great. So as a CTO, you've seen the product development process from the beginning and your team grows instantly. And how things going like differently as it scales? Sure. So Breaker is still, for how much we've done, is still a fairly small team. We're about seven people right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And what's 
interesting and growing is that we spread to other platforms. So we started sort of um, all on iOS um, and then we've built out our website a lot. We've built out an Android, we've created a new Android app um, and then we built out tools for podcasters. So really we have a lot of stuff all going on at once. Mm -hmm. um, and that's from a technical perspective been really exciting mm -hmm. um, and also from a product perspective. Hi friends, I'd like to tell you about something. You probably know how hard an app business can be. Publishers don't know what apps to build, how to monetize them, or even what to price them at. Advertisers and brands don't know where their target users are, how to reach them, or even how much they need to spend in order to do so. And investors are not sure which apps or genres are growing the quickest and where users are really spending their time and money. At this point, my friends in mobile action have a solution for you. You don't have to guess. Make your decisions based on data. Mobile Action helps you to make your app a success story. Companies like Disney, Tencent, Shipt, and Let's Go use Mobile Action to better grow their apps with world-class data. Sign up to mobileaction.co and apply the promo code 415. Join over 200,000 people using Mobile Action today. And let's get back to this amazing episode. Yeah, great. So let's go back to the painted lady. Sure. So for now, uh, can you walk me through the process of like, let's say six months or how things like will be? Uh, yeah, how they go. So this is, I'm learning all this for the first time. I'm not like a professional home remodeler mm -hmm. and things are different in each different city you're in. So um, for San Francisco, um, we're starting by sort of taking existing measurements of what's there. Um, they call those as built. And that helps the architect determine what they have to work with. Um, then we hand it off to the architect who does a first draft and they show it to show it to us and we say, we like this or here's what we want changed, do another draft. So there's like some round of designing process. And once we're at a good place with some of the designs, we submit them to the city to get permits. Um, and I actually still don't know all the things we have to get permits for um, and then start sort of building. And the permit and building and designing process kind of goes in like cycles, like little mini cycles. Like we might go get a permit for this and start building and then, so, so, and some of that is to try and speed up the process and, and um, put, put many things in the pipeline at the same time. Um, but I don't think we'll start actually, anything will be starting building for a couple months. Um, and then once it starts, the process of building starts, it should, should move pretty um, steadily along. Um, and then at the end, I would like to sort of stage the home and take photos of it. I think it's this overlooked part of the process that people just move in right away. Um, and, and a lot of people want that, that privacy, um, and just want to like get into the house. But I, I think it'd be fun to sort of take, take progress photos both in the beginning, but also sort of at the end. So right now I actually have to hire a photographer to go take yeah. the four photos. Um, I don't trust myself to be a good enough mm -hmm. photographer. Um, so I'm in the process of doing that right now as well. Does that answer that question? Well, do you have yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, still great. learning. This is all new. <laughs> yeah, I understand you. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. So we actually came to the end of my questions and this episode of Forum Five Stories. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really enjoyed your chat. Thank you so much, Taha. This has been great. Um, I'm really excited about this podcast and I think what you're doing uh, is, I, I found the episodes to be very interesting. So thank you so wow. much for having me. Thanks so much for joining me. So you can follow Leah on Twitter at Leah Culver. It's uh, L-E-A-H-C-U-L-V-E-R. And if you'd like to see more updates about Pink Painted Lady, you can follow on Instagram at Pink Painted Lady, as it's pronounced. And thanks for watching. See you on the next episode.